Morning. Welcome to work camp. Um, because they didn't get one in the intro, a round of applause for the organizers. Can you show another one else? I'm really excited to be here. I'm really happy to be talking at WordCamp Boston, and I'm really, really grateful for all of the work that the organizers and the volunteers have done for us. Um, this is stepping into custom post types. If you're looking for a different session, good time to head out. Um, <laughs> this is the intermediate track. So um, on the program, it says uh, some, and as Mitra said, some PHP, some HTML. Um, I'm going to try to, I don't have a whole lot of code in my talk, so if you're just getting started with all of that, um, do feel free to stick around. Um, I can't promise that it'll, that some of it won't be over your head, but I am attempting to give people a sort of point of entry to learning how to use custom post types. Um, I'll get started. My name is Kao White, you can call me Kao. I am a front-end developer and data architect located here in Boston. During the day, I work for a company called Grand Circle Corporation, which is a travel agency in Fort Point near the South Station area. Um, we actually use a .NET CMS called Site or pretty is about as far away from WordPress as you can get. But I've been using WordPress since uh, about 2007, 2008, and it's been the backbone for almost all of my client work and my freelance work. The majority of what I do with WordPress are custom theme installs, um, usually with integration with built-in plugins for um, custom post types, which is the subject of this talk. So on that note, what is a custom post type? There were a lot of people when WordPress 3 came out, and we got to the point where we could define our own custom post types. Um, everyone was saying, well, WordPress has finally made it as a CMS. I don't really know what that means. WordPress has always been an extendable platform that you're able to do a lot with. Um, how close it is to a traditional CMS really depends on what plugins you have installed. The, the thing about custom post types in WordPress 3 is that they're really just, they're kind of duct tape. You can do a lot with them. They're very simple in their basic form, but you can use them to tie together a whole bunch of other different plugins and classes and give your users and um, your theme designer something that they can really work with and they can get a lot of mileage out of. So, to restate that, a custom post type is your own content type. This talk is mostly about data. As I said, I'm not going to go that deep into any particular code samples. Um, I don't think it's particularly useful for you to be copying down 17 lines of PHP functions up here when you can just copy it off of Justin Tadlock's blog and get far farther than I'd be able to teach you. Um, the thing that custom post types help you solve when you're designing a theme is how to store and how to represent the data that you need to present to your user. WordPress has a number of them built in. Blog posts, pages, attachments, revisions, and menus are actually all considered post types within WordPress. As you know, if you've used the system at all, these work in very different ways. Nav menus are called via a particular function that you embed in your header or your footer that's called across the site. Attachments can be tied into a particular post or referenced more generally. These all have, why is that still on? Um, these all have a particular <laughs> set of uses and functions that um, make them uh, very, very custom tailored to a particular use. When you build your own custom post types, you're doing the same thing. You're finding a need that can't be addressed by the built-in WordPress post. Maybe you need to have a parallel set of posts for your homepage or featured content, or you need to create an uh, archive of books or users or authors to do the general examples that are used on the codex. Custom post type is a great way to go in and say, I need to have something that's separate from all of those that I can control a little bit more generally, directly. Creating these uh, can be done mostly through your functions.php file or a plugin. Um, just a show of hands, how many people are familiar and, and work with their functions file and their themes or develop plugins? I want to get a sense. Okay, so most of you, good. Um, Works the same way as any other function that you're hooking into WordPress would. Um, in this case, we call it on the init action, which Kelly referenced in her talk. This is the function that runs at the very beginning of WordPress, and when you tie a, de a definition of a custom post type in with your register post type um, function, that is saying this is going to run at the beginning of WordPress so that it's always available. Um, the basic syntax for the function, you just need to add your hook and then register post type, name of post type. That's all you need to do to get the bare bones minimum. It doesn't get you a whole lot. That turns out something that looks kind of like this. 
It doesn't have any customization, doesn't have any options, doesn't even have a whole lot of content fields. You have your normal content editor by default in your title, but there's a lot of other things you can do with the custom post type. On your register post type function, after you give it a name, you can also give it an array of options. Those, these options are where you're really able to go crazy. And you can use different names, which are going to appear in the WordPress user interface, um, so that you can explain through labels and text to your users exactly what these are and what they're meant for. In this case, we have featured contents and homepage items. Featured contents is kind of ambiguous, but homepage items, you know, a user could come in and say, oh, I get what that's for. If I want something on my homepage, I make a homepage item. Um, there's, on this slide, I've sort of broken down the three general types of options that custom post types have. These are all referenced on the WordPress codex. Um, I have a number of links at the end of my slides, which are all up online. Um, where you can go in and look through all of the options. There's a very long list of things you can do with these, but they break down basically into labels, which are, as I said, how they are displayed and how they're referenced, what the support of your custom post type is, which determines whether you're seeing this or that. And um, finally, what I would call access rights. If you look down at the bottom, I think everyone can see this. It says public, true, has archive, true. There's a bunch of options like this that say, can I take this custom post type and use it in my theme in such a way that a user can type in the permalink and visit that directly? Or is it only available through calls from other functions on other parts of your site? An example of this would be you can't visit a nav menu item directly. If you create a header menu using WordPress menus that has your home, your about page, your contact me page, you usually, you can go to the contact me page but you can't go to the contact me menu item. That item is private. It is something that is only referenced from another piece of code. Whereas if you're creating an author-based custom post type in order, uh, maybe you're a publishing company and you want a page to represent one of your authors, you would be able to view that page directly. These are all broken down later on um, in the links that I have at the end. Uh, there's a lot of different options you can customize, whether this is available to end users, content editors, wide range of the um, there's a lot of content available in a custom post type. This is everything that a WordPress custom post type supports. You can see you've got the new WordPress formats, excerpts, content block, track facts, comments, custom fields. Particularly with custom fields, you can do a whole heck of a lot to customize your data and say, I want this custom post type to have attributes of this sort, and I want to be able to reference it in my theme when I'm designing it. But that might not be enough. Even if you go crazy, this is from the codex as well, um, defining a custom post type for a book. You know, they go through all the options, give you all kinds of different things that you have access to, but it might not be enough. If you need to get beyond the built-in custom fields for storing your data, maybe you really want the form to be intuitive and user-friendly. I personally don't find WordPress's default custom fields to be um, something that can work for all clients. There are ways to add in additional meta boxes, as they're called, to these pages. Um, Kelly touched on this in her talk, if you were here for the plugins conversation um, in the last hour. But you can use the add meta box function to just plop another block of content on your page for the content editor to um, put material into, or you can use a couple other custom implementations. I happen to have used one called uh, WordPress Alchemy Meta Boxes. Um, that there's a link to at the end as well um, on a couple of my projects. And these slightly more robust classes give you just a couple more options around how you want to do uh, your rich text editors versus not um, when you're building out your themes. Finally, one thing the custom post types let you do is that they let you assign a custom taxonomy to your post type. Taxonomies have been around since before WordPress 3, but this is a way for you to define your own categories and tags. Um, this is really, really powerful because you can use these as sort of attributes when you're referencing your theme. Um, who's worked with the WordPress query object? Yeah, about half of you. That, that object will let you specify exactly what types of posts you want to access and whether you want to access just the custom post type, just the custom post type with a particular taxonomy. You can really get fairly fine grained with it. The syntax is not super easy, but again, it's all documented on WordPress's site. Um, and uh, as you build out your taxonomies, you can really get a lot of information into one post object and target that very specifically from across your website. If you're not much of a coder, this 
could be a little daunting. You know, we've gone through two or three different things that rely on a plugin or a functions.php um, editing, and a lot of options, a lot of variables. This can be a little bit overwhelming, but there is a really good plugin for building custom post types called Custom Post Type UI. Uh, that also supports custom taxonomies. That's really, really powerful and actually a good learning tool for um, <coughs> figuring out how these all work. So we're actually going to step into that. And um, um, shut this off since that's what I This is a sort of vanilla uh, WordPress install. I installed it this morning. Um, <laughs> There's only one plugin that I've downloaded, which is this custom post type UI. I've activated it, and so it shows up down here in the bottom. If I click on that, first thing you see is that there's a lot of information on this screen. Rather than just having some generic options, the homepage of this custom of this uh, plugin gives you links to the books of the authors. But below that, you get frequently asked questions with links to things like how can I display this content in my website. Um, really, really useful questions that you might have where they give you links. Justin Tadlock, if anyone's familiar with him, is a WordPress expert and a blogger who um, was one of the first people to really uh, post about the capabilities of custom post types. Um, it's where I began picking this up, and it's still a very good reference. His posts are very, very informative around what you can do with this tool. Uh, there's also, it's not loading because I'm online, but there's a demo video, and um, I'm actually plug the WordCamp Boston. Adding a new custom post type with this tool is very simple. We simply need to give it a name. Now, something you always need to do when you're building custom post types is to make sure to give it a namespace or a prefix. In this case, we're going to use WCB underscore to represent WordCamp Boston. And um, I'm just going to use WCB WordCamp as the name of the uh, post type. The reason you would do this is that if you create a post type called products, a lot of people might use that term, and if two of those plugins load at once, there could be conflicts in your code. So we're going to give this a label, call it WordCamps. Singular label would be WordCamp or WeirdCamp. <coughs> Never try live coding; you always make mistakes. Um, and we'll give it some sort of description. You can go in through this and add in all of those advanced label options. The reason this is a really good learning tool is that even if you are a big coder, this serves as an interactive tutorial. You can go in and say, what is a search item? Where does that label display? What is a view item? And where does that label display? And it will tell you exactly where those terms show up. Then there's the advanced options. This is where you can define, as I said, what elements of the custom post type are available to the user. Maybe you don't want this to be able to, you don't want to have revisions, you don't want it to have comments, you don't want it to have trackbacks. You can disable all of those specifically. So we're going to leave in custom fields, we're going to leave in author uh, featured image. We'll just take out the rest. You can also opt to make your built-in categories and tags available to your custom post types. Um, maybe the, you're creating a custom post type that is simply a different sort of post. It actually is meant to integrate with the rest of your blog. You do want to use the same categories, but you don't want it to be accessed on the same page. This would be a way to have those pieces of information overlap. So I'm going to go ahead and create our WordCamp post type. And you can see right here, WordCamps. WordCamps, add WordCamp. Very, very rapidly, already, we've been able to create a post type that is now in our website. And we can go in, oh, let's recreate this. Um, we can go in and add one. So we're going to call this one WordCamp Boston. This is identical to your normal post editor. You have all the same fields. <coughs> And then you can see that down here, all of the other attributes, the custom fields, the author, featured image, these are all things that we specify should show up. Once you turn them on, you can still hide them up here. Maybe you want to show or hide custom fields or don't want them to have a, a featured options available. You can turn that off as you normally would in this interface. <coughs> so we're going to go ahead and publish our WordCamp Boston post. By default, it will click on the wrong link. Um, 
it'll display as a normal post. I'm going to get a little bit later on in the talk into how you can customize exactly how these display in your templates. So that's great. It's a work in Boston, but we don't have any metadata for it. We don't have any attributes. So I'm going to go back to my custom post type UI plugin and add a taxonomy. In this case, I'm going to call it WCB Cities. And I'm going to attach it to WordCamps. It's possible to use this tool to create taxonomies that you would use with your normal posts. And that can be really powerful. It can also be really powerful to have a different taxonomy for every category. It depends on what you're trying to represent. Right now, if this is a blog about WordCamps, I might have news posts that are normal blog entries, and then custom posts that are detailing specific WordCamps that are happening. Yes? Um, how do the taxonomies relate to the hierarchy? Can, do, they, do they determine it? I'm not sure exactly what you mean. So if you have something that's a, that has a taxonomy of cities, does that automatically go under seats in, in your navigation? You would need to create it that way. Um, when you're building your nav menus, you can nest things however you want. Um, if you're building, I'm about to get into, uh, within the taxonomies, within this plugin, you can actually go in and say whether it's hierarchical, in which case it would behave as a category would, where you can define the first level would be country, then state, then city. Or you could just have it be a tag, have it function as if you're saying this is a Boston word camp, this is a rainy word camp, this is a too hot word camp, things like that. This is a generous volunteer word camp, all of those things. Um, so I'm going to create a hierarchical custom post type in this case because um, I find that tags are most useful when you might want potentially to add many or all of them. Hierarchical makes more sense when there's very specific things you're selecting. In this case, WordCamp is generally, any one is generally in one city, so we'll use this. So I'm going to create that. And after having selected to add it to WordCamp, so you can see it's already present right here in the nav. We'll go ahead and we'll make Boston. Give it a slug, the lowercase description. Then we'll create another one for the WordCamp Chicago, um, which we're not going to be building right now, but just to sort of see how they work in the menu. I'm actually from that area. Um, so once these have been added, you can go back to your WordCamps. You can click at it. You'll see your taxonomies listed out here. One drawback to this interface is that if you add seven different taxonomies to a post type the way I did for a recent project, they're all going to list out. And when you hit quick edit, that update button is going to be far off the screen. So do think about the facts that you, whether or not you want to use this interface when you're building out these items, because they could potentially get a little bit confusing. Um, we're going to say this one is in Boston. And that's all we need to do. Now, if we wanted to, in our theme, we could put out a list of uh, WordCamps by city. We could put out a list of WordCamps and then list all of the attributes they have associated with them. And we can do this very easily and very rapidly using a simple plugin. The plugin also, um, to the early discussion of MetaBoxes, if you go back to custom post types, one of the frequently asked questions is, how can I add custom MetaBoxes? There's actually also a custom field template plugin that plays nice with this plugin and lets you get to that level of control without necessarily diving into something like WordPress Albany. Who's seen this chart before? This is WordPress's theme, hier uh, theme template hierarchy. When you make a request, let's say it's, I want to display a page. WordPress then says, well, what is that page? Is it a post is an uh, archive page, and then it'll work through this, and whatever item it hits first in your theme directory, it will display. So if you have a, these are completely illegible, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so right here we see custom template.php, probably pass that by, but page slug. This would be if you created a uh, page with the slug about, you could do page dash about. That particular template would be hit before your generic page. You can use this to intercept custom post types. Archive post type and single post type 
big blur and little blur respectively, are the ones that you can use most easily to explain um, to your templates, I mean, your, sorry, your theme, how they should display a particular post. So if you've added all of these custom meta boxes to your custom post, and you have a lot of attributes and a lot of taxonomies on them, you probably don't want to render them with your generic index.php. That's probably not going to look very good. It's not going to make the best use of the data. So single post type, in this case, uh, using the WordPress uh, codex example, would be single dash acne underscore product. Using the one we just created, it would be single dash wcb underscore wordcamps.php. This will catch that request and let you build a custom form that's going to display it a little bit more appropriately. If you want to use them on other pages, this is another snippet from the WordPress codex. You can create a custom loop for your custom post type. Lots of customs in this talk. Um, very, very simple to build an array. This, this is what I was talking about with the WordPress query syntax. We're giving it a particular post type that it's looking for, limiting it to 10 posts per page, and then instantiating that query as a new loop. Then you run through that loop. In this case, we're just printing out the title and the content, but you can do anything in here. You can have multiples of these on the page. If you get really crazy with it, sometimes it's good to look into caching strategies because you don't want your pages to be overly complex when they're being requested. But there's a lot of power here to build uh, the right interface to react to the data that you created. And I messed up with There we go. So in the uh, description of this talk, I built it as a case study. Getting to that right now. I am a developer currently working on, um, in, as one of my contracts, a client called Nutfield Technology. They are a laser galvanometer manufacturer, which means they make little mirrors that direct lasers when they're doing like laser printing or laser scanning. It's a very technical product. They wanted, when they were redesigning their site, they were looking for a content platform that would be able to give them a good interface for their engineering technically savvy, but not computer technically savvy people to put in content, and then be very flexible for how they wanted it to be rendered and displayed on the page. So their home page, they wanted a lot of things. They wanted a carousel. They wanted uh, rotating featured product sections. Um, all of the stuff at the bottom can be handled by widgets. We know that by now. Um, but on this other page, lots of custom information here. Each product that they want doesn't just have a description. It has specifications. It has more info. It has application, um, what you can use these for. This is a great application of custom post types, both of these respectively. The first one um, is home page items. This is very simple, except for the bottom bit. You have your feature image, which you get out of the box. You have your title, which you get out of the box. And you have your um, content block, which you get out of the box. At the bottom, the clients in this case wanted to make sure that they could limit these items to only pointing at types of products. So what we did was we actually built in, using WordPress Alchemy, a custom meta section where you can give it a label for that call to action, and then actually use a custom post type loop within your interface to get the information you want to display. So this dropdown is a taxonomy. This is, if you updated your taxonomy, this dropdown would update. What this does is it says, this link should go to one of these. If it doesn't want to go to these, you're probably not using that section of the page in the way that the marketers wanted it to be used. So you don't have to limit use of custom post types and manipulation of that custom loop to your presentation theme files. Yes? How is this different than just having a product category and a galometer subcategory? You can definitely do it that way, too. The reason that it was done this way was just to sort of keep things separated out in the interface. Um, it was a preference for the client to have it set up kind of as discrete sections rather than as a hierarchy. Um, the second custom post type is the product itself. A lot more, this is the one where I was talking about having probably in, in many cases too many taxonomies, but it turned out to be the easiest way to get the information available to be used and edited by the client. Um, and then uh, we have a number of custom uh, fields using the custom meta boxes and actually uh, parameters that are passed in this page that lead onto a gravity forms um, form that you can launch.
just do that button in the middle. So the reason that we ended up using so many taxonomies was that one of the things that the client wanted was a product selection application. This is a wireframe of that. Um, it's a little more of a comp, but um, what they wanted to be able to do is sort of like if you're on UEG or some sort of site where you want to say, I'm looking for a TV, I'm looking for a TV with HDMI input, but working through the um, attributes of the product and finding the one that's right for you. The audience that Nutfield services is a very technical audience that cares very, very deeply about the difference between a 10 millimeter mirror aperture and a 15 millimeter mirror aperture. And so they wanted, and um, the thing that they'd seen in their industry was that people were moving towards these sort of step one, step two, step three, what is your selection criteria. The thing that taxonomies did for us here was that every one of these product listings at the bottom, which is loop through, we built a custom loop, list out all of the custom products that are registered to be, um, there's actually uh, an attribute for whether they should be included in this page or not. The custom query we build looks for those products, says, should I display this? If it does, it puts them on the page and gives the container for it in the HTML a class of all of the taxonomies associated with that product. Each taxonomy term has a slug that's associated with it. We look for those in JavaScript, and as they work through the interface, use that to visually filter the list very simply. Um, there's a lot of other ways you can do this. It's just one potential example of ways that you can exploit a list of taxonomies in your theme. You don't just have to be saying this post is a member of this taxonomy and that taxonomy. You can use these in the back end to enable additional interaction. So there's a lot of advantages, particularly in this particular client scenario, for using custom post types. They really liked the ability to have everything split out nicely and labeled correctly on their um, uh, admin panel, which is the second bullet I just got myself backwards. Modularization of content on the home page, ways to take sections of the site that are going to be maintained separately, especially by separate people, and put them in different parts of the admin interface so that you don't run the risk of having people overlap and um, edit things they're not supposed to. Um, Taxonomies, as I said, allowed very, very quick development of the basic JavaScript filtering tool. Um, and because they're a post, because all a custom post type is, is a post on steroids, we got all of the things like file attachments and featured images for free. Very, very strong tool in that regard. Certain taxonomy and term combinations. 
if you're not familiar with WordPress query syntax, it takes a little bit of time to ramp up on that. These are none of these are deal breakers. The client loves the WordPress interface, and we found that using custom post types, even in the particular way we've done it, and you can use these in all sorts of different ways, has been a net positive, but just calling out certain gotchas. Yep. So that's where um, the question was for those who didn't hear. Um, the uh, admin interface that I demonstrated for this company um, had very, very simple fields. Um, structure was very easy to tell exactly what um, each of the different fields were and what the different sections were. Um, you can actually pull up what it looks like on the uh, product page. Again, um, this is sort of constricted because I have too many things in my uh, tiny MCE, but each of these is broken out as an individual section of the form. That sort of thing, is that what you're talking about? Yeah, um, I mean, I, I ended up not using custom post types. I ended up using a lot of taxonomies because I didn't worry about custom post types after I finished. Um, so it would have been much easier, but I ended up having to turn a lot of things off on the admin screen so they didn't see it. And I did that just by hiding it, and I didn't think that was the best way to do it, but it seemed like you have a much better thing going there. So if you're... Using um, something like WordPress Alchemy, which is the uh, class that I was using to build those custom meta fields, that gives you a lot of control over exactly how those fields are rendered and displayed within the editor. If you're talking about the admin panel on the left, that list of options where you see products, pages, menus, etc., there are actually plugins that will customize that specifically. I'm not currently using any of them on this project, but I've worked on with other clients in the past, a Cambridge company called Fargo's Games and others that um, did we did make very heavy use of plugins that specifically restricted the view and the order of items in the admin menu um, to make things easier for different uh, author levels. So again, just to run over a couple things that kind of hit us when we were first working with custom post types one or two projects ago. Easy things to get around, but they're helpful if you know about them up front. First, namespaces. As I said, this is really important. Kelly touched on this as well. Whenever you're doing custom developments in WordPress, make sure you're using unique terms. The easiest way to do that, I found, is by having a project or client-specific prefix that you append to all identifiers that might have conflicts. Um, for consistency, this also helps you make sure that you can keep track of what functions in your code relate to that project. If you're using something across projects, maybe you use your own secondary namespace for it. Another is portability. Uh, frequent criticism of custom post types is that, well, they're custom. If you're going to use these heavily in your theme, you need to make sure that um, the client understands that it will be consequentially more difficult for them to um, migrate to a different platform or a different interface after that. Uh, there's some criticism of particular theme frameworks that use custom post types because as soon as you start using it, you're kind of locked in, whereas others that don't make as heavy use of custom posts you can jump to pieces or you can jump to something else with less hassle. Having the custom posts built into the theme itself is definitely a risk here. If you have those abstracted out into a plugin, that plugin can come and go and migrate to different themes and you just have to add in the appropriate hooks. That is one way to get around this. SEO, um, minor concern, but it's helpful, you know. So if you're using your permalink structure, and um, you do have archive pages available for your custom taxonomies and your custom post types, you're going to want to make use of things like the rewrite attribute to make those pretty and to make those uh, be the sort of permalink that you want to be displaying to the browser. Um, these are all things that are touched on in the WordPress codex, just more of the options when you're registering the post type, rewrites one of them. And finally, it's easy to get carried away. As some of the comments have pointed out, there's Always two ways to skin a cat in WordPress, um, particularly if you get sort of excited about a particular way of doing something, it's possible to kind of go too far with it, and you end up with an interface that has all sorts of special fields that render in particular cases. Um, basic structure is designed for simplicity. If you have a page that might have a chart or a text box on it, Unless you need to use that chart or that text box separately elsewhere, 
just have it made one text field. That way they can add in their chart or their text box without having um, multiple fields that they have to like remember to see it that will be blank in order for them not to display. There's a lot of references for custom post types. My slides are on SlideShare now. You can get to them through the WCBOS tag um, within SlideShare. That has all of these links in it. Um, Justin Tadlock's blog on custom post types is a really, really great foundational intro to this. WordPress Codex has a lot of information. That's probably your go-to reference. If you will open in another window when you're diving into this, it'll help a lot. WordPress Alchemy, um, not sponsored by them or anything. I just found them to be useful. Um, Add Metabox plugin uh, is a plugin that demonstrates the basic syntax for adding your own metaboxes, very similar to what um, was touched on in the last talk. And finally, custom post type UI plugin is the one that I demonstrated earlier. Custom metadata manager. Custom metadata manager is the plugin that was referenced earlier. Thank you. I'll add that into this list when we get a chance. So um, that's it. I have, uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Um, thank you for listening. And uh, please, if you have any feedback for me, this is the first time I've given a talk at a conference, so feel free to rate me. Nice on. job. Yeah.
attributes that I've clicked on and hide the others. So it's a, a simple way to walk through, and if you're using classes, it's very, very easy to build a list of classes that you want to manipulate, and then manipulate those all together on your page. Thanks. One more, and then I think we have to break. I could be wrong if I'm wrong. Is there a way to define relationships between different custom post types or custom taxonomies? I have not done this a whole lot myself. I believe there is. You were referencing this, I believe, the ability to define relationships between custom post types. Someone over there, question. Um, I think so. You can do it. If not, you can, as I said, reference a list of one custom post type in the interface or another and use that to build relationships. But I think you can also create at least a basic, um, you can create a hierarchical post type so that you could nest them under each other. Again, thank you very much. Um, that's it.